So I have a project that I'm building where I need to um, read temperature from one of these. This is a PT100 resistive thermometer. And the project is um, basically a water bath that heats up chemicals for analog photography, specifically for film development by the C41 process. And um, it's going to do the, the device is going to do a couple other things, but the main thing is it's going to read temperature and adjust the um, adjust the temperature of the water bath. So how do we read one of those? So you've got to know about those. This is this is basically a platinum wire sort of structure, has a nominal resistance of 100 ohms at zero degrees centigrade, and then goes up from there. The more you heat it, the higher the resistance goes. So to read this, you basically need to pass some sort of current through it. And you could do this. The, the simplest way to read one of those is just have a resistor, then have your PT100. There, and then you go out here, and you basically read this with an analog to digital converter. But this is far from optimal because um, the current that's flowing through here is very dependent on um, the supply uh, voltage here. And then also um, you have the problem that if this is 100, uh, 100 ohms, the voltage you're going to generate here is going to be rather small. So the voltage change from, let's say, 10 to 50 degrees would only be if you're passing 1 milliamp, for example, which is a good sort of current to run this at, um, would only be, what, 20 millivolts or so that you have to sense with your ADC, and most ADCs aren't really that accurate. Um, if you use an 8-bit ADC, that's um, almost, well, that's almost on the limits of what it can do. Um, so a much better thing to do would be something like this. You have some sort of current source. I'm just going to draw this as a block and I still have this connected to ground. With most actual current sources you'd have a sense resistor down below it, but we're not going to be worried about this. I'm just going to write C S for current source. And then you'd have some sort of amplifier, and that goes out to your um, to your ADC. This is actually a fairly good setup to do this. Um, and also, this amplifier it can also um, it can remove offset from here. For this. Um, uh, for this project, we're only going to care about temperatures from about 15 degrees centigrade to around 40, 45 degrees centigrade. So what you can do is you just your uh, the the lowest temperature you're going to expect, you're just going to pull down to zero in in this in this amplifier. So 10 degrees, for example, or zero degrees would give you zero voltage on here, and then as it goes up to, let's say, 50 degrees, you get your full voltage swing up to 5 volts out of here. And then your ADC can work with a, with a fairly nice resolution because it can use all its 8 bits. Um, the only thing you have to do here is you have to amplify this properly. If you've got a lot of drift and noise and stuff in your amplifier, then um, yeah, you're not gaining anything by, um, by reading this properly with your ADC. Yeah. So this is sort of the problem that we're going to try and solve here. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go one abstraction level deeper and we're going to first we're going to look at this current source here. There's many current sources that uh, we could use for this um, but I'm just going to use a very simple one including an op-amp. Um, if you draw basically like this you have your you have 5 volt supply going in here. You go down and basically just 
generate yourself a constant voltage. Which this is going to provide, um, assuming that your supply voltage here is regulated in some shape or form. Um, to make this even better, you could use a JFET instead of this resistor here, um, a JFET current source, which is just a single JFET transistor. And that would give you constant current through here, therefore constant voltage on the Zener diode. And that would make this even better. And after you generated your constant voltage, you have an op amp here that drives a transistor and an NPN transistor, and that goes down to the load, which is PT100. Here, and it also has a sense resistor, and the voltage from this sense resistor goes back to the inverting input of the op amp, and this just terminates down to ground. And the transistor, obviously, with its collector, goes up to here, and you would read your PT100 voltage from here. This goes up to the next stage. What you also what you would have to do is um, you'd somehow have to subtract this. So um, we might also have to measure the voltage here. Which I'm not currently sure about. I have to think about that. Because as the resistance here changes, um, the voltage over here is going to change, but it's also going to change this, while the current remains the same. So I built the circuit. Is this in focus? Yes, uh, I built the circuit that I draw out here. And what I did is I attached. Um, a multimeter between here and there, and it's showing 151 millivolts um, with the art uh, with the PT100 at at this temperature. And my current is about 1.5 milliamps, um, and this PT100 isn't. Um, it's not exactly 100 ohms at 0 degrees, so I have to calibrate this anyway. Uh, I'll probably put a pot in or something to the... Um, probably to the um, output of the amplifier that I'm going to attach here, so you can sort of null it. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to put it on the output, but it's going to be somewhere in the amplification stage, probably. So, the thing is that I have to do is I have to figure out how to um, basically measure between here and here while being referenced to ground. Because if I measure through there, um, that's no good because of this, res this sense resistor here. Um, or I might even use another current source that doesn't have a sense resistor uh, but instead has this returning directly to ground. Um, I don't know yet. Further experimentation will tell. The next step in this is building the amplifying block. And what I did is I used um, the second op amp that's in this package. It's an LM358. I'm going to write that down here LM358 1 and 3 2 and um, I set this up as um, as a differential amplifier with resistor here and resistor here and wait I'll just put inverting input up here and it makes it a bit 
easier to read and more like they conventionally draw it. And this is connected to the output and this has another resistor that goes down to ground like this. Um, and these two are connected to here. And this is connected to at the moment uh, DVM. And this is also connected to ground. Um, although this is eventually going to be connected to the ADC on the microcontroller. But just for testing purposes, it's connected to multimeter over here. And I calculated those resistors. Those are 22K. This is 22K, and this is 1K. This gives us a gain of about 22, um, which works out um, fairly nicely with the voltages. So at the moment this is at 3 volts and I've got the um, PT100 sitting over here and if I touch it I actually see the voltage going up just ever so slightly but if I now actually come in with a flame and heat this up you can see the voltage rapidly climbing and this is something that we could easily and well read with our ADC. So yeah, those are the four resistors over here on the breadboard and that's all about it actually. Um, this doesn't have any offset zeroing or anything like that uh, yet. I either, I'm, I might add that, I'm not sure about that yet, but there's also um, the distinct possibility that I'm just going to um, calibrate this in software. So I'll measure the uh, I'll measure the voltage this has at for each um, PT100 sensor. I'm going to measure this at zero degrees and then also at forty degrees with an exact reference thermometer, and then I'll just linearize um, through it. So I'll draw this down here, this makes it easy to understand. Um, I'll have my U measurement here, and I've got the temperatures in degrees centigrade here. So I'll take my 0 here and my 40 here, and the voltage that comes out will be something like this with UA and UB here and then I'll just um, I'll actually I'll measure those two points and then I'll just whack a line in here in between here this is actually it's not it's not linear if you look at the curve for PT100 you can actually see it's slightly bent but since we're doing this over 40 degrees this shouldn't really uh, be any sort of issue, especially not with the sort of accuracy we're looking for here. Um, you just linearize this. Yeah, I think like calibrating it like this, maybe maybe do even three or five point calibration um, should, should be good. Um, I think I'll do that. And then just put that as a calibration value into the microcontroller, you have to do it again if you if you change that, but it will uh, provide the best accuracy. So I modified this further. I added another differential amp to it, and that differential amp basically goes in here where the DVM is would be connected and. Um, um, one input from the differential amp is this, and the other one is just a potentiometer from the 5 volt supply uh, rail to, to ground. What you can do with this is you can basically null it. If you crank this now, it's at the lowest, lowest output voltage the op amp can produce. 
um, and I turn it the other way around. It's basically this is with this to set to zero, and this basically the voltage that's coming out of well, that's coming out of this op amp circuit here. So what you can do is you would actually cool this down to let's say your lowest temperature that you're going to expect with us it's zero and then you know, just carefully turn this down it's a bit too far like turn it up ever so slightly to exactly at the point where it's where it's basically zero and now if you heat this up you'll not yeah you can see it's increasing now um, the nice thing about that is now we've got a nice sort of um, um, scale that starts with with basically zero instead of starting somewhere at three volts. Um, this isn't strictly necessary, but I sort of like it. I think I'll um, integrate the circuit and I'll just use a quad op amp package and put those two circuits and this into one package. Um, yeah, instead of using just two discrete op amps here. I made the circuit I put on a breadboard earlier into um, this PCB which has the transistor and diode and the pot and a quad op amp package here. Um, not, I'm only using three of those op amps, the for, uh, four four I'm not using. Um, all the resistors are surface mount on the bottom because it's just much less work to put them on and I also sorted this PT100 R2 terminals here. Um, it's a little botch wire here and it has a couple of jumper links here and also here under the stip package and also here where I forgot to drill out the holes. Um, this was just to try out that circuit before I put it on the PCB and yeah it works fine. Um, I just, what I have to do, what I'm probably going to do today is I have to calibrate this um, with a bucket of ice water and uh, some sort of heat source.